Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced, and this is going to begin sort of a new arc for the next several videos on the channel. So basically the idea of iceberg lake house engineering. This isn't going to be like a deep, 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 thorough data engineering course, but the idea is to show you sort of so, sort of like a basic approach to how you could engineer a iceberg data lake house and be able to deliver reporting, BI dashboards, all sorts of different things. Um, and the basic thread of the story will be this. Basically... All, all you need to have an iceberg-based data lake house. Oh, that's not what I want. I want a square. And let's start with blue. All you need is a data lake. Okay. And in that data lake, you're going to want Apache iceberg tables. Okay. Which are made up of parquet files. Okay. And that's essentially the story. So the basic idea is how do I get data into Apache iceberg tables and how do I read? Okay, so what we're going to be focusing on is using Spark as the ingestment point. So Apache Spark. We'll bring in data from the outside, wherever. Okay, and then bring it into Apache iceberg tables. Into our data lake. And then we'll be using Dremio as the data lake house platform. And this essentially creates the unified layer for people to consume the data. Okay, and basically these iceberg tables can then be read by Dremio and then they can be delivered for basically any use case you can think of. So they can be delivered for BI dashboards. They can be delivered for reporting. They can be delivered for ad hoc analytics. They could be used for applications. So if you're building data applications, okay, all that stuff can all then be done through using Dremio as sort of the organization and delivery layer. Okay, and that's it. And now notice we only have one copy of the data. That's just basically the, in our analytical world, we just have a, a iceberg table version of the data. We're going to do all our modeling virtually through the Dremio Lake House. Um, and then that'll deliver all our our data, our data modeled data to our endpoints. Um, and then, but all the raw tables will be an iceberg here landed in our data lake. That's essentially it. That's all you would need to do. Then you would just want to run regular maintenance, which Dremio can then also handle as well. Uh, if we use a particular catalog called Nessie, because again, we need a catalog to track our tables. So really what we would want to do is have a catalog and what we'll eventually use is Nessie. Okay. And then if we do that, then there's all sorts of really cool benefits we get along with, you know, being able to capture versions of our table, uh, actually versions of our whole catalog. So we can actually roll back, you know, if there's a mistake across multiple tables, we can roll back the entire catalog. Uh, we can ice create no zero copy clones using Nessie. Um, a lot of really cool stuff. Okay, so essentially that, that'll be, uh, and if you're using Dremio Cloud, okay, then what you can do is you can use Dremio's Lakehouse Management, which is Nessie based. So Dremio Lakehouse Management, formerly known as Arctic. It's just basically Dremio's internal catalog, which is based on this Nessie technology, but it also allows you to automate the maintenance uh, and cleanup of your iceberg tables. So basically, you just basically allow Dremio to do all the work, get the data into the lake, and then Dremio kind of takes the rest from there. And Iceberg acts as the layer that allows for that portability of data. But for now, let's just get used to using Spark and how to like generate data with Spark. And then we'll get deeper and deeper layer by layer. Okay, so let's first, let's set up Spark. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do now. So I'm gonna use, we're gonna be doing this all from your laptop. Okay, so what you're going to want to do is pull this particular container. So you're going to, so assuming you have Docker Desktop, if you don't, go to docker.com and download it. But with Docker Desktop, what you're going to do is you're going to look up my name, Alec Merced, and I have this container or this image that I created to make this really easy to use Spark right from your laptop. Okay, so it's going to be right there. So now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take that image and you're going to want to create a new container from it. So I'm going to hit this little run button here. I am going to go over here, we'll call this Spark. And I'm gonna bind port 8888, okay? 
that's just going to be where because also this container has Jupyter Notebook installed, which is going to be the way we interact with Spark by writing Python to interact with that Spark server. OK, and theoretically, nothing else you need to do here. Environmental variables would be useful if we were using like AWS S3. We are not right now. We're going to basically handle everything sort of separately from this. So we're good for now. So I'm going to hit run. OK. Do, 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 do. And that's going to run the container. And we're going to want to pay attention to the output that's about to show up. So you'll see here, see there's this output. This is going to tell us where to go get to our notebook. So what I want to do is want to copy this URL right here. So I'm going to just copy that URL. Copy. I'm going to go take it over here and bring it to the browser. Okay. And right here, we can now start creating notebooks. Okay. So I'm going to create a new folder for our work here. And we'll call this, I'll rename it. Okay. I want to rename it and we'll call it Iceberg Lake Housing. Why not? So I'm going to open up this Iceberg Lake Housing folder. Now, first, I'm going to just show you just what a notebook is a little bit. So I'm going to create a new notebook. So we just say a new Python 3 notebook. And basically what this does just allows you to kind of run Python code interactively. So I could just do something like this, like print one plus one. Okay, and then maybe I want to create another cell. So I hit plus, and I want to do like print two plus two. Okay, and then maybe I go print three plus three, or print three plus three. Okay, something happened with that cell. So I'm going to delete that cell. Okay. Okay, but anyways, basically you end up with these cells where you can write blocks of Python code. I can hit run, and it's going to run the code in those cells. Actually, I want to make sure I highlight the cell that I want to work out of. So I'm going to start from here. I hit run, and see it runs the first line of code, and then it's going to run the second one. Four, and see I can do it cell by cell, but then I can go back and change this. So if I want to change this like to three, three, I can rerun that without having to rerun the previous line of code. It actually maintains the state from that previous line of code. Okay. So um, that's the beauty of it. Okay, so I can go and adjust things. You can create sort of like an interactive notebook where people can like change things so to run different analytics and create different data visualizations. It's just a really nice visual way to run Python code and especially for like interactive and analytical type use cases. So that's what Jupyter Notebook is. Again, this is sort of an older version of Jupyter, um, but it will do the trick. So I'm gonna leave it at that for now. In the next video we'll do is we'll create a notebook and actually start using Spark but just kind of want to get you guys set up, but that's all it takes to get set up. Now you have Spark running. So again, if you're using Docker desktop, if you go to containers, I see that there's my Spark container, it's running. And um, yeah, we'll continue working with that. So I'll see you all later on uh, in the next video.